I'm going to show you how to put together a brochure in InDesign today. If you do, you should have access to this tutorial, which is written out in a Word document, and the brochure.zip file. If you extract that, you'll have all the files that we'll use to complete this tutorial. So here's what we're going to end up doing. I'm going to show you how to use images, especially in InDesign. That's the important part with this one. So what we have to do is first, let's just open InDesign. Let me move this out of the way. Here we go. And let's do File New, and it'll be a new document. Now, this is going to be a brochure. So this is going to be one single sheet of paper, front and back, and we're going to put it together um, uh, uh, horizontally. So this will be in the landscape position. Um, the other things that we want to worry about when we're creating our document, let me title this brochure, uh, the width should be letter, uh, or it's, I'm sorry, it should be letter. Our orientation should be landscape. Our margins are also going to be important. Where do I have 3P0? I want 1P6. You could type that in if you wanted. And that's effectively a quarter inch interior margin. We're not worried about the bleed and slug. We're not actually going to worry about that on this one. Um, it is going to be two pages non-facing. So uncheck facing pages. Go ahead and click create and you should get your new document with two pages. If I zoom out a little, there, perfect. So this will be the front of our document and this will be the back of the document. Now the first thing I want to do is put down where my folds are going to happen. We're going to do this using master pages in the pages panel double click on the a master now if you remember this is sort of the layer behind every single page in the document um, so for this one what i'm going to do is simply create a series of uh, column guides so i would know where to fold uh, my brochure for this one go under layout create guides i pretty much just want to have three columns, and I want to uh, um, go ahead and click preview so you can see this. Right now it's trying to do it as though it were uh, uh, text column guides. Instead what I want to do is set the gutter down to zero so that this just becomes a solid line. It's not a, a, uh, a little column unto itself. And then do you want to do it inside the margins or inside the page? This will be done to the page. Um, this will make it so that it accounts for the entire dimensions of the page rather than just trying to create it inside the little margin area. We want the full page. Uh, that should be all you need. Go ahead and click OK. Great. Now the other thing I want to do is put a background behind everything. Um, and this is going to be a little color uh, gradient background. Now there's no background options when you right click like there is in Word. Instead, what we're going to do is simply draw a box around the entire document. I am still in the, um, in the A master. So here is my, there we go. I got it right to the edges. And I'm gonna go into the, I wanna see the control panel and I wanna see under color, I want gradient. Here we go. So first off, all you have to do is click this little guy and you suddenly get a gradient. And then you can go and edit it. If you're familiar with this in Illustrator or InDesign, it's pretty much the same thing. So what I wanted to do is go from white to blue. And there's a couple of ways that you can do this. Probably the easiest way is just go up to window and bring out my color swatches. There we go. And then with the box still selected, I simply take this blue and drop it over the black. There we go. I now have my gradient in the right place. The only problem is the angle is wrong. I don't want it to go, I want it to go uh, white at the top and blue at the bottom. That is either 90, nope, it's negative 90. There we go. Top to bottom, nice blue color. That is a nice cyan color. 
Perfect. Now, I'm going to be, in, we're going to end up using this design a couple more times so you can take and drag it to the swatches panel and then it will save it. All you have to do is grab it from here in the gradient. You can actually grab it from anywhere that you can see it. Drag it to the swatches panel and it's saved and we can use it again later. Okay, still here on the master pages, what I'm going to do is put in a big watermark. It'll go behind everything. Um, it's going to be a big logo that was created for this and then we'll make it a little bit transparent so it's a nice watermark. With this box deselected, click away from it so it's deselected. Go to File, Place, I'm going to go to my desktop and into my brochure. I've got a whole bunch of different files in here. We're going to go over most of them. We're going to add each one of them in turn and we might even have to make some adjustments to them. The JP logo, go ahead and show import options. I always click show import options just in case there's something I need to, I need to change. I don't think we need to do anything for this one, but go ahead and click show import options and then click open. Okay, there's the little logo. Everything in here should be okay. Preview to the bounding box is fine. Click OK. There you go. Now that logo is loaded into my mouse. And the best way to do this is to go outside of the image of the background and drop it in. And what I really want is for this guy to be um, really big. It's a little too big. Come back just a bit. There we go. And then we're going to rotate it. Kind of looks like this. And then I want to make it transparent. And that's the little FX button in InDesign. Transparency is in a different place in Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. They all do it slightly different. But here's transparency. We're going to drop that down to 50%. Preview it to make sure it looks good. Yeah. OK. Now the other thing you might notice is that this guy has really jagged edges, and that's not what it's supposed to be. Uh, this is an Illustrator document. It should have really nice crisp edges, and the reason it doesn't is because it's trying to do a low resolution preview for us. So to change that, go to View, Display Performance, and change it to High Quality Display. This is what your images will actually look at, look like. On a two-page document like this, it's fine to leave it at high quality display because you'll be able to so you'll be able to see what every document, um, every image actually looks like. But now if you look over in the pages panel, you'll see that if we go back to our pages one and two, that master page that we just created has been applied to both documents. I can't click on any of it. It's just it's that hidden layer underneath. And if I wanted to make any changes, all I have to do is go into the design here in the um, in the master pages, and it will update everywhere uh, in my document. Perfect. This is great. Um, the other thing that I want to do is just put down some uh, some sort of guides for myself. When you fold up a brochure, the problem that you're going to run into is that this will be the, sorry, on page one, this will be, the right-hand column is going to be my cover. My middle one will be my back cover. And then this one here ends up being sort of an inner flap. Might be a way to, uh, one way to talk about it. And then when you open it up, page two, this will be my left, middle, and right columns. So these are just here so that I remember what I'm supposed to put on each one of these different, um, in each one of these columns. Okay. So for the main, let's start with our cover. Now what I want to do here is I want the logo. I want a little bit of marketing text about what these guys do. Um, and then, yeah, that'll be the main thing on the on the cover. So for this one, I'm going to go, I'm on page one. I'm no longer in my master. I'm going to go to File, Place, and I'm going to put that logo in again. I'm going to click Open, 
and the same settings are fine. This time I'm going to leave it, I'm going to do it on the, the document, and it's going to go right about here. Now I've got to make sure that this guy is nice and centered on the page, that the distance between the edge and the fold is right about the same, and that may cross over my margin a little bit. Here's some things you need to worry about with using images in InDesign. First off, there are two images here. If you click on it once, you'll get a blue outline. This may be difficult to see on the screen. If you click on it again, you will get a red outline. These are the two different boxes that you have to worry about. Let me go back to this. Click it once, I'm in the blue box. This is sort of the image as a whole. I can pick it up and move it around. If you click on it again, or you get a little circle icon in the middle and you click on it, you should, it should turn to red. Now I'm moving the image inside of the box. This is one of the more confusing things in InDesign. Uh, it is very useful. It is just very unexpected if you've never seen it before or you're used to working with single box images in Illustrator and Photoshop. Be aware of that. You can move each of these independently. You can squeeze an image however you want. In order to prevent that, I'm going to undo that. What you do is typically you hold down shift and that will keep things proportional as you stretch them. If you do this on the blue, on the outer box, what you'll end up doing is cropping the image. Um, this may be what you want if you have parts of it that you just don't care about um, or you want to sort of make it go from vertical to horizontal without actually uh, rotating it. You can do that here. You can also simply put your image, squeeze your image down in the blue. I mean, I use shift to do that. And then you've got these options, fill frame proportionally, proportionally fill fit content proportionally. What these will do is they will try to fit the content and the frame together. It'll do weird stuff sometimes. This one will try to make it fill the frame. So it'll crop itself, it will get cropped off. This one will try to fit the frame so that it's not cropped. Typically, you will want to use the second one. So they're up here, right up here above auto fit. So now that I've got this, uh, let me shrink this just a little bit more so that this distance on the left is the same as the distance on the right. And now that should look like it's fairly well centered. Let's move it up here too. So this, this distance on top, bottom, and left are all the same. Okay. Now let's put some text in here. This is a little flight school. So I'm going to put what they do. They do chartering. I'm going to use a little tilde. They do instruction and they do skydiving. Okay. Now the text was too big. Um, just by the default text that I had, what I'm going to do is select it all. And that is control A on a window or control or command A on a Mac. And I'm going to use trebuchet. Just a nice... Um, curvy sans serif font, trebuchet. It's also pretty standard. At 12 point, it's, it uh, fits like it should. I'm going to center this. Uh, 12 points, all caps, 30 point in tracking. Now this one right here is tracking. The VA that's in the little uh, reverse box, it does not have a slash through it. And the little arrow goes fully left to right. I'm going to make that 30, oops, just so it fills it out a little bit more. Mm, no, nope, it's too much now. Did 25 work? Nope. I'm going to have to do 20 so that it fits. Okay, so now I've got my text. You could do anything else that you would like to, to do to this if you want to pick a color. Go right ahead. That looks fairly nice. And I want to make sure that the distance between the bottom of the logo and the top of the text kind of matches the margin. That may feel a little too far. Let's see. No, that's okay. Uh, that's the letter W that turns all of the guides on and off. If that feels all right to you, then you can leave it. 
push it around until it feels nice and balanced. Okay, we'll put some other stuff on here later, some images, but for now we're going to go to the back cover and I want to put an image in here. Um, typically on the back of a brochure, even on the front, you might have, we're just going to have most of the contact information that's going to go on here. But we also have to worry that we're putting images on top of our, um, our watermark. So here's what we're going to do. With the um, info in, in InDesign, I want you to grab the rectangle frame tool. And this one is going to go edge to edge right about here in the middle of my column. Now you notice that this one has an X through it. That is the only difference between these two types of boxes. You can put text in here, you can put images in here. It used to be a long time ago that the X's, the frames with X's were only for images and the frames without X's were only for text. Now they're merged and they can be either, but they let you use, they, they still let you keep both. So for this one, now with this box selected, I'm going to hit File, Place. The one that I want to drop in here is called airstrip.psd. And I'm going to open that one, and it's a nice little picture of an airplane landing. Um, and we don't really have to worry too much about anything in here. All this, this image should be set up properly. When you click OK, it's going to automatically dump it in the text box that you have selected. If you have no text box selected, that's when it puts it in the mouse. This may be confusing. Sometimes you have a box selected and you don't know, and suddenly you have, it's in your mouse or it's in a box. Uh, just realize those are the two options that you can do. If you have a box selected, it's gonna throw the image in the box. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill the frame proportionally and let it crop. So now it just fits, fills up the entire thing. If you want, you can resize this. Um, if you do, you can uh, just hit that um, fill frame fill frame proportionally button as many times as you need to. If it's still a little weird, or uh, yeah, you can move that around however you like. Then I'm going to put a text box under here, and this one I'm going to do a little different what I've done before. I'm going to do this, click text, click in, click once inside the box. The other way to do it is to simply grab the text tool and drag a box, but I wanted you to see that you can do it with these boxes as well. I do have a little bit of made up contact information to throw in here, and it's simply going to be uh, typical stuff that you would find anywhere. An, an address, a phone number, a fax, your website, and then your email address. Now for this one, we're going to do all kinds of control. First off, you have control over the fill, which is this guy, and then the stroke, which is these options. So let's give it a one point stroke. I'm going to change the color so that it's nice and blue. This will be our sort of theme for everything. And then the fill is going to be white. This text is very hard to read on top of the logo, so giving it a white background helps separate it. Mm, still could use a little bit of uh, um, a little bit of design. So let's center it and then we can center it vertically. To get to the option where you can center stuff inside of a block, uh, a box on the page, you have to be in the selection tool, which is the, the solid arrow, the top one. Then these buttons right here allow you to do vertical justification. You can move it to the top, the bottom, the center, or you can do this one where it tries to expand it to fill the whole thing. Okay, this is all right, but let's, let me center this. Let's make this a little bit nicer. Let's use our trebuchet font again. I'm just gonna type it this time. Trebuchet, we'll use bold. And you know what? Instead of blue on white, Let's do blue text. Let's do white text on a blue background. So I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to change my font to white. I'm going to grab the, the box and then I'm going to sort of swap these colors. I'm going to make it a blue background and a white box around it. There we go. That's a little bit more subtle. 
There's nothing wrong with doing it the other way if you would prefer. Um, yeah, so I'm going to put my contact info here. There we go. Yep, that'll work. Okay, now what we're going to do is on this inner flap, I'm going to put an image here in the upper corner. We've got some text that will eventually go here, but I want to drop this image first. And this one is going to be, make sure nothing's selected. Okay, file place, not from the library, you don't want to do that. File, and this one is going to be Cessna exit.psd. When I open this one, uh, click OK. I'm simply going to drag a box here in the upper corner. Good. This guy jumping out of a plane. Now you may notice that it looks a little weird. There's some transparency to it, but it's not great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my links panel. Links lets you see everything that's already, all the different images that are dropped into your InDesign document. This one is Cessna.psd. You can see the airstrip is this guy. If you double click on it, usually it will try to center it on there. And then it knows that the logo's in there a couple of times, once in the A master and once on page one. Okay, for the Cessna, what I wanna do is open it in Photoshop. If you click on it here in links and click on the edit button, it will try to open it in whatever photo editor you have. I'm gonna have to open Photoshop. It was trying to open it in a little image viewer program. Uh, the other thing that you can do is right click, um, edit with, and we wanna edit it with Photoshop. And that should bring it up in just a moment. There we go. And what I wanna do is a little bit better job of um, cutting out some of the things that are in here, making the transparency happen. So we got some fingers cut off. We got some extra blue. This just was a very bad layer mask. Now, if you haven't dealt with layer masks, it's this guy. What I can do is let me disable this layer mask. The image is there fully. Everything is, is in here. All of the sky, all of the, the person, everything is here. This layer mask is kind of like an invisible ink layer. Anywhere, oops, not apply, I want to enable. Anywhere there is black painted with this layer, it goes away. Anywhere you paint with white, it comes back. This is called non-destructive editing, and it just means I can make as many mistakes as I want, and it won't screw up anything. So let me undo that real quick. So what I'm gonna do is just use my mouse to get some of these, um, these last little bits. Uh, Make sure in the Layers panel in Photoshop, you are clicked on the layer mask right here. Using black, paint anywhere, and it will get rid of the blue sky. If you go, if you get too much, you can use white and bring something back. The other thing that you can do is grab the wand tool. The magic wand will let you click on um, an area and then you can use any one of the tools to make things disappear or reappear. Wand right there. I can do a brush and paint that out. This is also a fairly old way of doing this. I'm not worried about this stuff down at the bottom too much. Uh, there are more modern ways uh, and faster ways of doing this, but this is one of the most basic. So I'm just gonna keep doing this. Let me grab that, get rid of that. And with my magic brush, I will get rid of all that and I don't really need this. There's a few little dots in there I wanna get rid of. And we don't really need this center beam. Let's go ahead and get rid of it. No one will know it's not there. Other things you might want to to worry about are that uh, when you use the wand tool, sometimes it will make a 
Uh, it'll get too much or not enough. So you can bring something back. Um, it may also grab too much. So for example, here, it seems to have cut off a leg a little bit and some of this white reflection got taken off. Go around to all of the edges and make sure that it looks okay. This is a little too much sky blue. I'm going to reverse my colors and there we go. If you have to err, err on the side of taking just a little bit too much. Um, that way you don't have, you're not trying to make some weird edge artifacts happen. Just go over them and it'll be a lot smoother edge. Now, did it work? Let's save this. I'm gonna leave it open in, in uh, Photoshop and go back to InDesign. Now InDesign, you can see, oh, I've got a couple of little weird things happening. It didn't do it well here. I've got a few little ghosted dots in places. So I've got some more cleaning up to do. All you have to do is go back here in in Photoshop, I'm just going to get rid of all of these dots. This is about where they were. Uh, let's see. Didn't like it here. Brush. I'm just going to get rid of all of this underbelly. There's a lot of JPEG artifacting in here. It's not great. That's okay. Save it. If it doesn't update automatically in InDesign, what you can do, what you'll see is in the links panel, sometimes it will automatically update, sometimes it will give you this. Modify, double click to update. All you have to do is double click that little yellow button and you'll get the latest version. I still don't have, I still have lots of little um, bits I need to clean up and they're very hard to see on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer I'm going to select black, select my paint bucket tool, and move that layer to the bottom. Now I can see them. Okay, now I can go back into my layer mask and I can start painting these out and I can actually see them now. So we'll get rid of that. Ooh, that's pretty bad. Okay, let's make that, clean that up a little bit. If you need to swatch, swip, swip, which back and forth between black and white, it's the letter X on the keyboard. If you want to make a straight line, click once and then shift click somewhere else. And you can make nice straight lines. It's still not gonna be that straight. Okay, click, shift click. I need to bring some of that back. Get rid of these, let's do the same here. Click, shift click. Layer masks are one of the most essential tools in Photoshop. They really are where you start to get your professional game um, mastery of layer masks shows uh, it really is just how professionals do a lot of things in Photoshop. So don't be afraid to play around with them. So this you may take end up taking quite a while to mess around with this, get everything looking good, um, get rid of all the little tiny dots that are showing up. Shoot a bigger brush that would help. use a smaller one. Now some of these are not great. I'm not going to go overboard. You can take your time and do whatever you feel is necessary to make that look great. 
going to try and get rid of the glaring mistakes. Undo. Okay. Just a little bit more. And then you're going to see if your hand is still cramped at the end of this. That's a lot of gripping onto the, onto the mouse. This will really teach you mouse control. Okay. So even though it's not perfect, um, I'd much prefer to go over that. <laughs> Probably take me another half an hour or so going over this guy. Um, but just go around the edges. You'll usually find all the major mistakes. Okay. And also it's on a fairly light part of the background, so it might not be too hard. Uh, it might be, you can leave some of the mistakes and it will look okay. All right, let's save that, go back to InDesign, update it. And I forgot to turn off my black background. Let's get rid of that. Save it again. Go back to bro the brochure. There we go. Okay, that looks a lot nicer. Cool. Now that we have this nice image, we're going to need to do this for uh, another image that we're going to put on the inside of the document. Oh, I realize I haven't saved this yet. Uh, I will save this on my desktop in the brochure folder. I'll just save it as brochure in design in case you want to see that. Basically, everything is right here. Here's my InDesign file. Here's my temp file. And here's all the Photoshop files that we've been working on. Okay, the next one I want to do is not that one. It's going to be this one. Now this file is a JPEG. We've got some problems with it. Uh, let's consolidate into tabs. Okay. First of all, um, well, here let me drop it into the document, and I'll show you what it's what the uh, what here. The problem is that this is an RGB document. We're also going to take out this background, which is actually pretty easy to do um, in this one. Um, so first off, I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to crop it. So it's down to just the just the plane. Um, you can also uh, we want to put a, a layer mask on this. You are not allowed to put a layer mask on an on a layer on a background. Oh, you can put a background layer on it. With this image selected, click on the background layer and click on the layer mask button or add a mask. It's a little circle with a square in it. When you do that, it will turn it from a background layer into a regular layer and add the layer mask to it. Now, wherever we um, select white or, or wherever we select on here, it will turn that into a layer mask. All you have to do is click on this and as long as black is your background color and you have the layer mask selected, you can hit the delete key. It basically is the same as the paint bucket. It fills it in with black paint, which in this case means um, uh, uh, to make it masked or invisible. Now I'm going to deselect, which is select, uh, deselect, or control D. And then I'm going to use my paintbrush again, because these are never perfect. I'm going to paint back in the window a little bit. Um, if you want to paint in the, um, uh, the, the propeller, you can. This one's going to be kind of made up. And in order to do this, you might need to set the opacity of your brush down and sort of slowly chip away at it so that it's 
somewhat invisible. We'll see how that looks. It might not look great. Um, everything else on here was pretty good. Put my opacity back up. Let's do the same black trick that we had before to see if there's any dots anywhere. Not the greatest outline, but no major dots. Okay, let me get rid of that layer now. Now, because this is a layered document with a mask, it's no longer going to work as a JPEG. JPEGs will not let you save this. So now I'm going to go to File, Save As, and it's the same document, but now it's going to be saved as a PSD file. Go ahead and click Save. The other problem that we're going to run into is that this is an RGB document and not a CMYK document. That's important. RGB means that it's red, green, and blue. That's great for the web, but for printing things, everything's got to be CMYK. In fact, InDesign is later on going to yell at us that we didn't change this to CMYK, so let's go ahead and do it now. All you have to do is go to Image, Mode, CMYK Color. Might not even say anything. Um, now I'm going to save it again, and this time we're going to add it into our document on the page on in InDesign. This is going to go here. We're going to have the plane here, and then we're going to have a helicopter down in the lower corner. So file, place, this is, okay, I've got my JPEG. Make sure you're getting your PSD file. Click open on that. Yep, that's okay. Oops, it looks like I had this, this box selected. I need to undo that. There we go. And for this one, I want it to cover two columns. This one's going to be nice and big. Um, it can even go off the page a little bit if you want. Like it's... Um, yeah, like it's coming off the page. I want the tail to hit a little bit more. I want it to take a little up a little bit more space to the to the margin, to the fold. Okay. Yeah, I kind of like that. We're gonna put text around it and all that kind of stuff. Okay. The next one I want to do is there's going to be a, an image of a helicopter down here. And that one's also in my brochure. And it's a police helicopter. There we go. Put this in Photoshop. Great. Now, there is a slight problem with this. Um, it is CMYK. You can tell in the tab it says CMYK. Um, what I want to do is... Uh, Whenever you do an image like this, you should hit Control shift l This is your auto layers. I'll show it to you. Go to Image Adjustments uh, Levels. That brings up this panel. If you've never used this before, it's great. It lets you change some really basic color properties. It can make the design pop quite a bit. Um, you can also just hit Auto, and that's what but you can easily do Control shift l or Command shift l is this auto button, and it kind of runs this uh, color for you. It'll make the image pop just a little bit. This one we don't really need to do anything else to, just save it. And now I can drop it in like I have, in, with, as like I did my other documents, make sure nothing's selected. File, place, I'm in InDesign again, and the police helicopter is already a PSD. Oh, that's good. And now I want this one to go all the way across. There we go. Now this one I left inside, I left the, the background in here so that we can do a couple of fun things. I really just want to put this on a, um, give it a, a, a drop shadow and kind of leave it as is. So if you go under, with it clicked, go under Object, Effects, Drop Shadow. This will look familiar from Photoshop. It's all the same things, Drop Shadow, Inner Shadow, Outer Glow, all that kind of stuff. You can click Preview and see what it's going to do. 
Uh, the default settings are probably just fine. And the only other thing I want to do, nope, that's fine. Put a border around it. Click. Okay, go ahead and click OK. Then I want to show you something that's kind of fun. There is a thing called Object Styles. So if you save it, if you click on an object that has an effect or stroke or fill to it, you can add it as an object style. And now if you were to click on something else, it would add that same style to it. Ooh, ooh, that's kind of cool. It adds this little drop shadow effect. Oh, this is also too big. It was supposed to be down sort of halfway. Yeah, about that big. Okay, so now I've got my object style. I can also apply this to other things on the page. I'm going to put it on this guy. So he's got a little drop shadow. We're going to do it on here. Drop shadow is nice because this is flight and it makes it think, look like things are floating. Um, yeah, so that's not too bad. Okay, these are the major boxes that I wanted to have on the, on the site. Uh, now what I need to worry about is the text that's going to go on the document. Um, we've got a, a nice margin around the edges. But is this exactly where our columns are going to line up? And it's not quite. So let me do this. Um, let me go to uh, layout. I'm going to create some new guides. I'm actually going to create my three columns with a gutter. So this is the distance between my columns of text. When you do this, three, let me make sure that's right, 0.25 inches. That's one P6. That's a little bit, little bit thicker. So my folds will now show up right in between my um, columns of text, and I now know where my margins are going to be. We want that set to, set to page will be just fine. Do not check remove existing guides. Make sure that is unchecked, otherwise it will get rid of the, col the guides we put, in, we put in at first, our fold guides, so we want those. Okay, so now the, these columns here are where our text is mainly going to go. And then this other line here is our fold. Let's get rid of some of these. We don't need them now. Column, fold, column. Perfect. So now what we're allowed to do is, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this Word document. It has all the text that we need in it including you know just a bunch of different things that we'll use you can do it any number of ways you can simply file place this or you can go in and copy and paste things as as you want um, so i'm going to go ahead and open this and we're going to copy and paste this is a little different than what's written in the tutorial um, but this might make it a little bit easier So what I want to do is take chartering down to skydiving. I want to take all of this and copy it. The rates here will go in on the, on the back. This, where I just copied, is going to go in on the, it's the inner text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a text box, grab my text tool, and we're going to start right here and simply paste that in. Now, all of that text is there. It is all inside the box. If you stretch the box, you'll see there's, there's more text to be had. If you can see this little red plus symbol, that means that we have, um, you have more text in it. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up a paragraph style for the different titles that we have. Uh, there's chartering, flight instruction, skydiving. Okay, I'm going to need that for all of those. We're going to highlight this text. And then in the control palette, I'm going to make it, we want our trebuchet again. There it is. 
it's going to be 30 point bold. Uh, I'm going to add my gradient under swatches. Add my gradient to the text. I'm going to give it a big uh, a black outline. Here we go. Cool. Now that I've got this, I'm going to go to my styles panel under paragraph styles and add that. So now it's paragraph style one. Uh, this is the only one we're going to create, but I typically recommend that you name them. So if you double click on it, you can give it a name and call it header. And there's just a couple of little things I want to want to add in here, and that is I want to give it a paragraph rule, which is going to be below. Turn it on, and preview it, and it's going to put a line through the bottom. Uh, I'm not sure it's a little difficult to see right here, but this one you can do offset and that will push it down a little bit. Uh, 0p6 should be just fine. And then we'll make the weight, we'll make that three point and make it a thick, thin line. It becomes nice and fun. Uh, a bunch of different, uh, a little gives it a little bit of a different texture here. Now to now you may also notice that it's kind of encroaching on the next paragraph. I'm going to go to indents and spacing and space after. I'll increase that a little bit until that paragraph moves away. Good. All right, click OK. Now I want to edit the basic paragraph. Uh, style. All you have to do is put your cursor anywhere inside a regular one of the regular paragraphs. Make it basic paragraph. You really can't change the name on that one. That's the default. But under basic character formats, see if you can find Palatino Linotype. There we go. Uh, we can leave it at 12 point. I think it's 13 point is what we actually need. Um, and then we can do indents and spacing, and you can do a first line indent of 1p0, and you get a nice little uh, first paragraph indent. So now things are showing up, this is looking good but I don't have all my text flowing through everything. Oh, and it looks like I forgot. I did one thing. I put my, my column guides here on the this page instead of on the master. That's okay. With only two pages, I'm not too worried if, about a small mistake like that. Let me put my um, guides on here again. P0 to the page. That was not enough. Layout, create guides. It was 1p6, wasn't it? Yeah, that looks better. So now I've got my guides on this page. If I had done them on the master page, it would have shown up everywhere. So let's do this. Okay, now that looks right. And then I'm gonna take and get this column, this left column to uh, continue on to the to the right. To do that, go ahead and click the little red X down here. The text continues, uh, is loaded into the mouse, and now I can draw a new text box. There we go. Now, there's one thing that will help. If you go to View, Extras, Show Text Threads, this little blue line lets you know where one column uh, overflows into the other. Now you can see, obviously, the problem is that we've got the, the text is overflowing. Uh, this guy, let me do one more, let me do this one more time, and there we go. Um, now I've got my text flowing everywhere, but I've got it over top of the 
helicopter. We can also do flight instruction. This is supposed to be this guy. That is my paragraph style. That's supposed to be a header. And skydiving is to header. Good. To get the text to run away from this guy right here, what I need to do is click on this box. Move this out of the way. And go to Window. There's one called Text Wrap. You also have the same options here, but you've got a little bit more control. You can set this so that text runs away from it. You can also set how far, and this creates a little margin that, that pops around the whole thing. I'll do 1P0, and then you can see the little blue box. That's how far text will stay away from, from it. Um, this is just filler text, so I'm not too worried if I, I, I want to make sure that I don't have a little um, widow up here. So I'll get rid of that text. There we go. Flight instruction, and I'll put a shift enter so that, that doesn't is not hyphenated. Actually, there is a fix for that. You can tell InDesign not to use hyphenation inside one of your paragraph styles. It's called hyphenation, and if you simply turn it off, done. Now, none of those headings will be hyphenated if there are two words. That's great. Um, we still have more stuff in here. Skydiving got jumped to the other page. So I'm going to click this one, and that's going to go on the back, yeah, where our skydiver is. So I'll put that here. Okay, it's not even all that much. Great. Now, the only thing I've got that I really don't quite like is that there is a lot of, uh, this text is very difficult to read. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a nice little background for these of a little transparent white um, box. So it's going to have none of that. It's going to have paper, but the transparency is going to be set to 30%. You can also do that right here. Um, another thing that you're allowed to do in InDesign, these yellow boxes, you click it with the direct selection tool, double click the yellow box, you can now control how rounded corners are. With this, I can uh, arrange and send it to the back, and now it's behind everything, and that white background helps this text become a lot more legible. 30% uh, might still be too low. Let me set it 50. Mm, let's go a little higher. 75. There we go. That's a little bit better. Now the text shows up. The background, you know, we could probably make that a little more transparent. But I now have this. I can drag a copy. That's alt-dragging. And I can fit this... There we go. So all my text now has one of these boxes, and they're just boxes. I'm just not doing anything special with them. Arrange and send them to the back. They don't go behind the um, master page elements. There we go. You could save that as, a, as another object style if you wanted to. Um, that would be acceptable. That's a thing you're allowed to do. Um, I'm actually going to make this one nice and big because I need another... I'm going to need one more um, text box. And that's going to be for... I need some more text. And that's this. The rates. I'm just going to continue it in this text box. My rates are now a header. There we go. And no, we're not even going to worry about this. Just get rid of the word. Okay, these guys, this is a, sort of a table of contents or a leader. In order to do this, um, did that do 
were the instructions for that? My apologies. One second. What I need to do is make sure that the the left and uh, um, that the prices are all nice and lined up. So to do that, you're going to go under Type Tabs. What happens is this lines up right here. This little uh, triangle, the upper half of this, is the first line indent. I can get rid of that completely by pushing it over here. There is a tab in between each of these. If you simply click anywhere inside this solid bar, it pushes the tab over. It's not really what I want. I want this one. This is a line to decimal tab. What it will do is it'll line it up on, basically the tab goes to the period. If I click here, the periods all match up. They're ragged on the left edge, but this is how you can tell the, the price is a little bit easier. You can see what it's doing right here. This is letting you know what it's aligning on. Then, if you want to put leaders in here, I'm going to put a period and a space, space, and enter. And that puts the little dot leaders in there. And you can play around with this until you get it exactly where you want it. You can bring that first line indent back in if you like. Um, and then I just need to do some some nice design to this. I'm going to make it uh, bring back my trebuchet bold italic. Yeah, that looks nice. Perfect. Now that I've got this, it's part of the, it's got the background on it. Let's put an extra uh, little line break here. I've got a little extra space here. I might need to change, move this a bit. So it takes up the Space, in fact, we could increase the font size a bit and increase the letting, and that makes it take up a little bit more space. And it looks like, yes, there we go. Our skydiver is jumping out. He's got a little bit of a shadow on top of our elements. It's nice and legible. Great. This is working fantastic. Okay. Um, the last thing I want to do is have, there's one more image that goes on the cover. It's, oh, oh, I know what's happened here. This has an indent. Um, to get rid of that, okay, you can edit this. See how it's moved over to the right a little bit? If you get that problem, it's usually um, in the paragraph style, the basic paragraph. It had the indent, the first line indent, and every one of these has an enter after it. So they are a first line. If you highlight this, you can set that to zero right here. That's your first line indent. Um, I think it's just got an extra line at the end. There we go. Sorry, we should have fixed that earlier. Okay, so now what I want is the, um, there's a little parachuter guy. He's coming out. Um, it's the last image. We're going to have him here, and then our slogan is going to be, The Sky's the Limit, because that's a good slogan for a, uh, uh, a parachuting school. And then once that's in place, I'll show you how to print this and how all the and how to fix all the printing problems. So last image is going to be, let's make sure it's set up properly, Sky Jumper. It's a JPEG. We're going to have to get rid of the background. Um, there are actually a bunch of tools for getting rid of backgrounds in um, Photoshop. And let me see if I can go through one right now. Uh, let me turn this into a layer. And then I'm going to add a mask. And if you double click on a mask, you can usually, yeah, you go to the mask properties. Um, you can get some, uh, some good uh, design here. Let me just grab, this is not right.
grab grab the wand here here's a better way uh, let me just delete the layer mask grab the wand magic wand tool and just click anywhere in the blue you'll see it starts to select stuff um, I can get rid of a few of these things but um uncheck contiguous and what it will do is if there are any holes it will grab them in the hole so if it's contiguous that means it will only grab the blue out here um, then select and mask and it's doing the exact opposite of what i want Let's see if select subject actually works this is a newer option in photoshop yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. You can try that one. Select subject. That seems to be the new tool. That, that works pretty well. I'm going to crop this down a bit. Need that extra. Uh, we still have to do our own little bit of work. This image isn't perfect. Uh, I don't, from here, let me disable it. You can see that all the little lines here, they're a little difficult to, to um, bring in. I'm not gonna worry about them. We could spend all day um, Photoshopping every one of them in. There are some tools that'll help you get them a little bit finer um, crafted, but I'm really not gonna worry about it. Uh, let me see, this one is, this is an RGB image. I'm going to leave it as that. Uh, I'm going to save it as a Photoshop. Save as skyjumper.psd. I'm going to go ahead and put it in. And I'm going to show you what happens when you when you do this. And it'll it's a thing that will show up at the end. Um, I'm going to place that one. Skyjumper.psd. He's going to go here. Make him go over a little bit. You can rotate him a little if you want. Whee, he's coming in nice and dynamic. Um, and then the next thing I want to do is put in a little bit of, oh, he should get his object style, shouldn't he? There's our shadowed object style. I'm going to put that with my other styles. Okay, the last thing I want to do is add in a little catchphrase. It's going to be the sky's the, the limit. Okay. The font I want to use is a pretty common one. You should have this one. It should be called brush script. It's a standard one that everybody, uh, most computers have. And let's make that 48 point. We'll center it. The sky's the limit. I'm going to give it a nice thick blue outline. Uh, let's try th three point. Nope, nope, not that. I want the font to have the blue outline. Um, this one is a little weird that you can't control the font here, uh, the stroke here. There is a, a window stroke with this. This is where you can control the, the stroke on text. Um, I want to, this is a fun little trick you can do. Um, I'm going to make a copy of this. This one is going to have no stroke and white text. And then line them up, but then leave them just a little off center. Here it is, perfectly centered. And then you go a little off center, and it gives it a nice little 3D feel. Um, that's kind of fun. Uh, but now you have two text boxes to worry about. So, for example, if I want to change the the letting on these, I have to do it to both, or re or remake one of them. There we go. And then see if I can grab both of these and then I'll 
group them together, control G. There we go, that's kind of fun. Can do a fun little rotation or something. Whee, he's coming in. The sky's the limit, he's gonna crash right through that. Sure, that's fun. Okay. So that's a lot of images. There's lots of stuff going on, but this is a fairly interesting, like you might want to pick this up and, 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 uh, and play with it. Um, here's stuff that you want to do when you finish this up. We need to pre-flight this. And this is a, has changed a little bit over the years in InDesign. Um, what we want to do is go to the pre-flight panel. This is also typically available if you package this document, but let's go to pre-flight first. Window, output, pre-flight. This is going to let me know what's wrong with my document. So right now I have overset text. Right here, it's letting me know, oh, something changed there. I have Yeah, that would have gotten cut off. So I think it's just too wide. Let me see if I can make that, yeah. I had uh, some tracking on that, so I just got rid of it. And now pre-flight says that's okay. Um, and it seems not to be affected by anything else. Sky jumper. It's a little odd. Usually it would tell me if a uh, something is uh, RGB. And define profiles. Here we go. Uh, links, color. So right now, for some reason, it's telling me it, it's letting RGB images through. That's usually actually pretty bad. Um, so we're still going to have to manually check that. Since this one is pretty simple, it's the only, I know this is the only one that's still uh, RGB. Um, I'm going to change it to CMYK, save it, come back here, and I will need to go to my links and tell it to update. It won't look any different. Um, it just changes the color mode. But now we won't, shouldn't get any errors when we pre-flight this. Yeah. If you want to, does digital publishing, and that one doesn't let you, like we would only allow CMYK through. I'll save that. Airstrip, ooh, what's wrong with that one? Uses RGB, okay. So I need to change that guy too. Let me go back to Airstrip, load that in Photoshop. And it's RGB, so image, mode, CMYK. Save it, go back to InDesign, and I'll update this little image, and the error goes away in my pre-flight. Perfect. Those are really the only things I, I think that we absolutely need to worry about. Now what I want to do is something called packaging. Um, Packaging is uh, collecting all of the, the different elements and files and fonts and colors and everything that you need to send this to a professional print bureau. If they're going to make 100,000 copies of your brochure, they need to have everything. They need to have your fonts. They need to have all of your images. And that is what the package option does. When you click this, it's going to say what you need. It may even give you some errors in here, and that's usually what pre-flight will let you um, handle. Right now, what I'm worried about is fonts. These are all the fonts that we've used, and if they're protected or not. If they're protected, usually it's because they're Adobe fonts, and you need to have an Adobe account to access them. Most print viewers are going to be fine with that. Um, but some of them might come back and say, hey, we don't have the font, you need to send it to us. And it's a little more difficult. All my fonts and images, none of them are have none of them have little errors beside them. Um, my color, my print settings, yeah, all this is fine. Now all you have to do is um, click 
package. Package must be must be saved. I just hadn't saved my document, so I'll go ahead and save that. And it's gonna say, where do you wanna save this? I'm just gonna put it in my existing, no, I'm gonna put it on my desktop. Um, it's gonna be called brochure folder. And I'll click package. Uh, it might give you a, a warning about fonts, just click okay. Give it a second, it's generating all kinds of stuff. So this is the folder that I'd been working out of. It's got my temp file, my InDesign, JPEG copies of the original files. This new brochure file has a bunch of new stuff. It has a document fonts folder. This is every font that I've used. I've also got a links folder. This is where every image that I've used is. It excludes the JPEG files because those JPEGs are not actually in the document. This is my INDD file, and this is an IDML file. IDML, you probably will never need to use it. It's just sort of an older format of InDesign. Um, it, it's not really necessary as much anymore. Plus, it made a nice PDF. So I'll open that one. And this is what it will actually look like. What you will do for your uh, project assignment is I want you to take this brochure folder and zip it up on, this is how you do it on a Windows computer, right click and, and click send to compressed zipped folder. It will zip up the whole thing. Now it's gonna be a fairly large file, like 25 megabytes or so. Um, I don't want your original one. I want the, the packaged file with no errors. And on a Mac, I think it's similar. You right click and there's a um, create zip file option. And that's it. That's how you create a nice, lovely uh, brochure in InDesign.